Hello, and welcome to our Friday webinar. Um, today we are going over, what are we going over? We're going over summer safety, keeping pet birds safe in the sun. This is part of um, Lisa Bono's uh, The Gray Way um, series that we have. So welcome, Lisa. Thank you for joining Hi. us. Thanks. And and uh, who, who do we have the pleasure of, of joining us in the back background there with you? Who is that? That is Sidney. Um, there's a little story in here about him, so I figured he could sit there behind us and interact if he wants. All right, uh, he'll just be judging you behind your back. <laughs> this is uh, yeah, exactly. Here. He's going to be saying that's not what happened. <laughs> yeah, he's like, let me tell the real story. Um, well, it is a. You know what? I I meant to look that up. I'm I'm trying to uh, let me. The first day of summer. When it was the first uh, official day of summer. Hmm. Uh, I think it is like right on the corner. So this is a very um, apt uh, topic here. First day of summer is on 2022. I forgot to look this up earlier. It's June 21st. That's officially the first day of summer. So not that you have to wait until June 21st to go enjoy summer activities, obviously, depending on where you are. But um, yeah, first day of summer is uh, June 21st. And we are, what, a couple weeks away, three weeks away? Um, so anyways, if you have a question, I'm sure people have questions about keeping their birds safe in the sun and other summer safety tips. Um, just a reminder to use the Q&A button and not the chat feature. Um, and let's see what else is going on. We've got, uh, yeah, so do that. And then I think you have a, a presentation for us today, Lisa, a slideshow, a slideshow. So. Yes, and I actually uh, have some interaction for, for the uh, people that are tuning in as well. Ooh, so. that's exciting. Yes. So I'll be keeping an eye on the chat at certain certain times. So it's going to be new for me to find the chat and try to look and see what I'm I'm seeing. But um, yeah, I'll have some questions for you. Okay. Okay. Well, I will uh, we'll see if we can. Uh, we got Brenda behind the scenes here managing as uh, help. Maybe I'll, <laughs> we'll all we'll all work together to make make this happen. So. All right. All right. All do right. you want to do you want to take it away? Let's talk yeah. about uh, some summer safety. Um, that's wow. very vital. Make sure everyone that makes it. All of our birds and people and humans make it through the summer safe. So. Exactly. All right, here we go. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And let's see from the beginning. Okay, one more thing. Got to get all these little screens out of my way so I can see. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining in. And this is the 11th um, webinar we're doing in the gray way. And I want to appreciate everybody's support and tuning in every time you do. So here we go. Safety is always the key um, when you're taking your birds out. So it's this is a very important topic. And I see a lot of birds constantly that are being lost. I share them with my board, my page members. And I've had so many messages in the background that how, how are you able to do this all the time and not take a toll? It takes a toll on me just sharing them. I can't imagine uh, the people that are searching and scouring the internet and, and Craigslist and everything for where these birds are lost to share them with us on Facebook and then for us to turn around and share them. So, um, you know, some, some birds are just lost due to accidents, other lack of protection. And we're gonna hit on some key points for protection to make sure you're doing the best you can to keep your bird safe. So it's summer safety tips for pet, pet birds and the importance of sunlight. It's very beneficial for the birds and there's do's and don'ts to taking your birds outside. We'll talk about harnesses, outdoor caging, and other ways to take them out and keep them safe from escape and possible dangers. And also we're gonna hit on what to do if they fly off. Okay, so you'll see some um, slides I put in here from some of my veterinarians. This happens to be Dr. Wade. She's out of, I believe, Clarence, New York. And she um, did a little lecture on sunshine vitamin. And this is very important because this explains why our birds need natural light. You have vitamin D synthesis, calcium phosphorus metabolism, immune function, serotonin metabolism, vitamin A, cofactors in suppressing cancer and autoimmune diseases, which 
we finding a lot more out um, neuroinflammation um, and birds are not able to make vitamin D in feathered skin. So D, yeah, now I'm gonna mess this up. Dehydrocholesterol is 10 times hydro, uh, higher in non-feathered skin, including the feet and the legs. So what does this mean? It pretty much means the birds really benefit and need vitamin D. Now, if your bird, uh, the UVB lights for the vitamin D to synthesize it, your parrots need full spectrum light daily if they're strictly indoors. You're gonna see a lot of this um, in black. You can read that if you want. I'm gonna to touch on what I've highlighted in red. Um, some parrots such as African gray parrots are especially prone to low calcium. Gray owners know that. And if they have insufficient vitamin D as a result of not having adequate exposure to full spectrum lighting, Inadequate lighting can lead to behavior problems such as feather picking, biting, screaming, all kinds of medical products, uh, problems. Natural sunlight or full spectrum lighting is necessary for parrots to synthesize vitamin D, a nutrient which is essential for the proper regulation of calcium and phosphorus levels in the body. Shop wisely when you're looking for lights as there's many bulbs on the market today that lack any research or documentation that they're actually provide the UVB that they claim to on the package. During mild temperatures, it's best if you're able to take your bird outside with the cage doors securely latched. Do not leave your parrot outside unattended and make sure the parrot has access to shade. Um, we're gonna to touch a little bit more on this, but the magnetic ballast produce a flicker that is very irritating to some parrots who can easily detect it when humans cannot. Now I say that a lot to people online when they're, they're looking at different avenues to buy light bulbs and they don't seem to really wanna take advice when you tell them all light bulbs are not created the same. We'll get into that a little bit more. Um, that is Mika down there in the little carrier and she's sitting in the corner and you can see that there's a little towel covering part of the cage so there is an area where she can get out of the sun. Now try as far as the flicker factor try not to use any fluorescent lights only incandescent lights this is because birds also have a very flat fast thicker Frequency, say that three times fast. It means that they can see very fast flickers of light as flickers. With fluorescent lighting, they see it as a strobe light, not a continuous light without flickering like we see. Now this is coming from Dr. Oros and um, if you're not gonna believe me, then believe her. It's very important you make sure you get the light, the correct lighting because you don't want the bird sitting there in like a discotheque. And that's gonna to lead to so many different problems and we can't see it, but the bird can. So if you have a bird that is maybe a little bit more nervous and jerky and you don't understand and the only new thing in the environment is maybe a new light bulb, you might wanna check that out. Back to Dr. Wade. Now, um, she is great for publishing studies and while I'm not gonna publish the entire thing, her website is up there. And that's her little Kelly there under the light. And she uh, worked on um, this study with so many different types of light bulbs. And in there, it'll tell you which ones she likes and what's good ones to use. It goes very much into detail. There's many slides there. So again, go to her website, buffalobirdnerd.com. There's a lot of different information on there, but this is very important. So it's a beautiful day in a neighborhood. You wanna go outside and enjoy the sun and feel the breeze. You wanna take your birds out to get their vitamin D and some fresh air. Um, after all, they're not meant to be inside. Their health needs are much like ours, fresh air and sunshine included. Now this is Emma and you can see from this picture up on the top left corner, that's her sitting in her window in my old house. She looks like she's getting a lot of sun there. And 
And actually, the windows were newer than, I believe, 1974. So windows that are newer are going to block the beneficial rays that they need. So even though she looks nice and bright in that pictures and she's sitting there and she's happy, she's much better off outside in her little travel cage. And she was, um, because of her twisted head and spine and neck, it's a lot easier for her to be out there um, and lift her wings up and be happy and preen and get all the sunshine she needs. These are some of the options that I've had through the years. And I find that the safest way is to have a smaller cage if you're gonna go out. That could be a travel cage, it could be just a sleep cage. Um, I can't say enough about these black collapsible cages that I have. I think I use them for just about everything. And you just have to make sure the connections, and we'll touch on that, that they're safe. And some of them you might have to reinforce because they're meant to collapse. So the first picture all the way to the left, um, that would be uh, Sydney and Emma sitting in their little travel cages outside. Now, this was one of our homes uh, we moved to after we were deployed um, or transferred with the military. And there was real, really nowhere to go out there and sit and be private. So this is going to come into play with Sydney's story as we go along. So we decided we were going to build this little gazebo outside. And outside the gazebo, I, I built like a little fish pond for enrichment for them so they could sit there and we would go out there and they would still have the fresh air and some sun, some sun could come in, but I could also zip down the panel, um, you know, to make sure the mosquitoes weren't getting in because West Nile virus was a big thing at that point. Um, so that was one of the ways that we I brought them out. And I only had Sydney, Emma and Sterling at the time. And that's where we'd sit every day. The middle picture is gonna be uh, the last house we left in New Jersey. You can't really tell from that picture, but that's two stories high. And the roof extended a little bit more on the top. So these, the uh, Harley and Ollie, those were my Amazon and my, and my Kaique. Um, they were underneath this little ledge to protect them from the sun. And you can see at the very last picture, there you have Sydney, Emma, and Sterling. And that was a bar that my husband bought and I confiscated it because it was a perfect setup to put the cage under, um, you know, that had the little cover for the sun. And you could see in the last two pictures, it didn't look very bright out, but, but I was working six days a week at the store. So I really could only go there on my day off, sadly, um, because I was putting so many hours in, but that happened to be the days. Of course, it was never bright and beautiful when I was out, but they still were able to get out and get some fresh air. So these are some of the types of little travel cages you could use. And I have experience with quite a few of them. So I hope you can see my cursor. Um, the, the picture all the way to the left again, the 14 by 18. I have not seen this one in person, but it's a company that I do know personally and they have decent products. I cannot tell exactly how many screws are holding it together to what pieces. That was something important that I did in the store is when something would come in, I would always put it together. So I knew how it functioned before I sold it to a client. I think it's important for us to know how it all works. I think that would be a decent product, but you have to also consider this is not something you're gonna walk around and carry. It weighs almost 23 pounds. So it's gonna be something you're gonna Put the bird in in the house, take it out, sit there, make sure you got a cover, place out of the, to get out of the sun. Um, you have this really cute little carrier with a parakeet in it. I don't have any experience with that one. I just found it online and it is stainless steel. I can't tell where the door is on it, but I just think that is adorable for a little bird. It looks pretty secure. Again, can't be that heavy with the size that it is. It's less than 10 inches across. So it'd be something either strictly for travel to the vet or outside, easy to carry when you're out there. Um, you have this red carrying case that is, that's an Avian Adventures. I actually had it in my store. I'm not really sure how many more, if they're really doing them anymore or how many are in circulation. It was a very good, outdoor cage, 
um, travel cage. The only thing is that it was put together with, um, I don't know the technical terms, but it had little knobs that would fit into each other. And that was to keep it structurally sound. But I would always tell clients what you want to do is if you can see my cursor, you want to zip tie the side of the cage to the top of the cage. The door actually had a very good twisting lock. That was not an issue. But you also want to zip tie the bottom of the cage to the sides of the cage. Because I have seen certain cages, again, not knowing how some are put together, lift up and then come apart. Um, down to the left, bottom row, you have a cute little carrying case down there. Um, I would suggest on this, you would zip tie the door closed because I don't believe there's a decent lock on there. So you have to be very vigilant and pay attention to what you're doing. Just because you buy it doesn't mean it's great to pick it up and move around a lot. The little blue and white cage, I actually used to give them away to clients if they had smaller birds. Um, this way they could take them outside. It was strictly for that or a vet cage. They're smaller cage. No bird can really live in it because it's kind of really super small. So again, you want to zip tie it all together anywhere you need to to hold it together so it's safe. And down here, all the way to the right, um, these, yeah, the black cage, those are my cages. That's what I use pretty much for everything. So the next page here is a little bit larger and I can ex explain a little bit better because you can see these little knobs right here. Okay, that's like a little curve that the cage all gets attached to. You have them right here. So the side hits the top. You have them down here where the plastic goes into the cage. You really want to zip tie that all together. I can't tell you how many times people would come into the store. And again, everything is all together. And I would explain to them, this is what you need to do. Because this cage is designed, when not in use, to, to fold down probably three inches tall if not, if less. And so it's not gonna be secure. There's not gonna be nuts and bolts. It's not gonna be anything. It's just gonna be these, these little things sliding into a piece of plastic. So you have to zip tie that all together. And even after explaining that, they would simply pick it up by the handle and the whole cage would crash to the floor. So you have to be aware of what you're using. Now you have your harnesses. That happens to be Miss Sam outside. Um, Honestly, I don't really take the guys out with the harnesses much anymore because I've learned we have a lot of hawks in the area. Um, I've watched the crows chase them. So it's just not the safest thing for me. If I am out in the motorhome and I happen to have the birds, um, I will put a harness if I'm gonna sit real close to the motorhome. And when I did have the harnesses on, I never had the birds up in the air. Um, I never had them on my shoulder. I didn't have them sitting on something else. I had them on my hand right into my chest. So, you know, every once in a while, maybe I'd move it three or four inches away so they could look around. But I was always protective of everything else that was out there, whether it was going to be a dog or a motorcycle going by or a hawk. You just never know. So my area here has a lot of hawks. My area up in New Jersey did not. So that's a personal thing you have to be aware of. You want to make sure you have um, a decent harness. There's a lot of copycats out there. And you have to make sure every time you use it that you're inspecting it and making sure that the bird didn't chew through it or you know uh, did something to make it loose in one area. You want to make sure that it's wrapped around securely, like the little video tells you to do, um, not loose fitting. It also has a leash that comes on it, which, you know, you, you don't put the leash on and then put the bird down in the leash hanging there. You want to make sure the leash is, on, leash is on your wrist and wrapped around your wrist a couple times. So it's not going to slide off if the bird does get scared. There are other types of um, leashes and harnesses out there. Um, there's one that just goes on the band and that is very dangerous for any parrot to have on. They are designed for a raptor and the tethers are, they're designed for the, the raptor leg which structure is much different than a parrot. They're stronger with more muscle mass 
designed strictly to carry prey. Using them on our parrots can really just pull a leg out of the socket or break their leg. So there's, you have to really put a lot of thought into what you're getting. Just because you might spend you know, $15 on a product and think it's going to work because you didn't want to spend the $30, well, you know what, save up, spend the $30, get the correct one that's safe and you won't get hurt. Another option is going to be the backpacks. These, these are my guys. This is how we go outside now. You can see they're under um, a big uh, canopy umbrella. So they're nice and safe and I am no farther than five feet away to watch them. Um, it does get pretty hot down here pretty quick. So I gotta watch them and make sure they're not overheating. You have to be aware with some of the carriers that are going to be um, copycats. Um, they're gonna have mesh uh, that is plastic and not stainless steel. And that's very dangerous. I had, I when I was, in the store, I ordered one just because it was at the distributor. I wanted to see what it was like. I got it in and I wrote on it, not for sale. So when people came in, they would say, oh, this is a really good idea. And I would show them why it's not a good idea because that bird's gonna get out of that mesh in 2.2 seconds. And if it's on your back or in your grocery cart or something to that effect, you're not going to be watching the bird. You're not going to know it's going to get out. So these carriers here actually have stainless steel. And if you've seen any of my presentations in the past, I've gone over exactly what's so good for them um, with the privacy panels and such. But this is a stainless steel mesh. Now, while I'm sure that some birds may chew on it, if they can reach it, if you have the correct size, they're not going to be able to reach the stainless steel mesh. And they're going to leave it alone. Again, a lot of people go for a smaller size thinking a bird could get in there, but the bird can reach everything in there. And what's a bird do? They chew. So if you get the correct size, there's add-ons you can get so they can't get to very strong points of the carrier. Um, but again, the most important thing is these contain stainless steel, which most of them on the market do not. And lately I've been seeing some knockoffs and a lot of them are going to be acrylic or plastic. And you can see the first one on the left. I have no idea who makes that, but you can see on the side, you have that plastic mesh I was talking about. So the bird can get out there. Not only that, you have a plastic front. There's not a lot of air holes in there and they can overheat extremely quickly and that's not a good thing because you're not going to be paying attention if it's on your back then you have the macaw on the carrier why that's a fabulous idea there is not enough insulation in there you have that in the sun just imagine standing you know in a room of windows or a closet full of windows in the sun so i originally had something like that it wasn't that creator i'm not sure who that is but my husband actually drilled a lot more holes all the way around to the point where we thought it was gonna be structurally unsound, but it, it did well. And I just always had to make sure it was never in the sun. The third one over, that's actually a, an adorable little carrier. My, I bought one for myself. Um, my grays didn't fit in it. It was too small. So for the smaller guys, that's a great investment. You do have the stainless steel wire on the front and on the back. The locking mechanism on that is pretty good. The perch on top is, it doubles as a handle. It's very easy to carry. And the bird can sit up there as a perch. So that's, that's a very decent carrier. Again, not to be sitting in the sun, but a very decent carrier if you need one for your smaller guys. And then all the way to the right, you have the larger, acrylic carrier that's actually mine and a lot of times I'll put Abby in there because she would chew her way through a cinder block wall if I allowed her Now that carrier originally does not come with that stainless steel door that's an add-on but that's a very good one as well again not for the sun but that's perfect like for going to the vet or something like that because it's easily disinfected so this is something um, that you guys are gonna keep an eye on the chat. 
hopefully if I can figure that out. If not, I'll have Laura keep an eye on it. Outside enclosures, this is a, this is a really nice cage. You can do this. It's not going to cost you a ton of money. There's a lot of different cage companies out there that put out things like this. These are going to be powder coated unless you want to spend the big bucks and go stainless steel. So know that the powder coated and stuff like that outside, it will eventually rust, but don't think it's going to be a permanent thing. But you want to make it as safe as possible. So now for you guys in the chat, What's it missing from this cage to make it safer? Let's see if I can get there. Okay. Anybody have any ideas? Okay, the floor. Okay, and that, those are very good suggestions because you don't want an animal. Okay, full sun, second entry door. There we go. Okay. All right, so a lot, a lot of you guys hit right on with what I'm going to say. Maybe There's add no some beads. What some was that? Beads. There's some, 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 you know, the, the beads, the case the doors open, a kind of another layer of stopping them. Okay. Well, they actually make something for that. So um, the things that are not decent for this cage, obviously this is just a Photoshop picture of a cage sitting on a patio. So it's not really set up for the birds. This is set up for a sale. So of course the top would need something for a little bit of protection. But the most important thing a lot of people don't realize is a double-sided safety door. And what do I mean by that? Here you go. So I might not be calling it the right thing. Uh, I never sold anything like this because I didn't have people coming in looking for aviaries, but this door or this box that is on the door is a double-sided door. So people will go in with their bird and the carrier, go in the first door, close the door. Be able to go in the second door, close the door. Then you can let the bird out. Now, if you only have one single door, you are walking in with the bird and the carrier. You are closing the door, letting the bird out. You have to get out. Now you have a loose bird in this big cage and you have to get out. That means you're opening a door for the bird to get out. And a lot of people have lost their birds that way. So if you're going to make the investment in an outside cage, please make the investment in a double-sided door. Uh, a lot of the rescues use this. I've seen it at Project Perry. They've made them all like that. Three of us can get in there at a time. We're all squished like little sardines, and it's safe to go into the aviary. Now, this happens to be one of my favorites, and I really wish I could have done something like this at my house, but my husband was not interested at the, this point. Who knows, maybe someday in the future. Um, but this one is backed right up to somebody's house. So all they have to do is open a door to get into the house. I think that's a fabulous idea. You can see it's got a roof on it. The people can go in there and sit as well. Um, on the bottom, you can see they put some kind of wood or down that's on a patio so no animals can reach up or dig underneath and get in and be a predator. Um, so that looks like a really good uh, addition to someone's house if you can go for that. And there are cage companies or manufacturing companies, I should say, that'll work with you for your style, whether you need a five foot one to attach to your door, or whether you want a 40 foot one or it's a zoo enclosure, um, there are companies out there that'll work with you. So the conclusion, again, this is from Dr. Way, is natural sun exposure for 20 to 30 minutes, two to three times a week in warmer months is ideal for your bird. Birds should wear a harness or be in a cage. Make sure you're aware of what's going on in your own backyard before you decide which one you're gonna use. Never leave the birds outside unattended because you can have hawks land on the cages. You can have the birds get out through the doors. Um, there's a lot of different things that can happen. So you can find all those not so happy videos on YouTube. Um, Ideal outdoor temperatures is 65 through 85 degrees. 
I usually go out when it's about 74 ish or above. I happen to like the warmer weather and watch for overheating, panting wings held away from the body because birds don't sweat. So the way they cool themselves out off is to lift their wings to start the pant. They can have a little bit of a tail bob. And you know, that's not good for them. They should be removed from that setting and put in and cooled down. So preventing escape, accidents happen. What can we do to prevent them? Keep your doors locked when not in use, not only because of today's society, but you don't need to have an open front door if there's no reason for it. I understand if people have kids or you know they have something else, they need to have it open, but you wanna be aware of where your bird is and if they have a direct, light, a direct flight path to a door. So in my house, all my doors that the birds have any kind of flight path to is going to be locked. Now, my back door, because we have the screened in porch, that's added security, will either go out that door or will go out through the garage door, but then the garage door itself is down. So it's very rare that people come in my front door because it's always locked. Check window screens often. This is another problem. People will let their birds out. They might have the front door locked, but they don't realize that the, the window screen is knocked off its little lock there and the birds fly and they hit the screen and all of a sudden, birds out the window. So you've got to check them regularly. Don't have your bird's cage or stand positioned where they can reach the screen. So. We always try to deter them from chewing on the wood, you know, sitting on a cage, sitting on the, the, you know, any of the woodwork on our windows, but people will still roll them up to um, open, open windows with the screen there. Make sure they can't reach the screen because again, it's not going to take very long for them to get through it if they're that determined. Be aware of where your bird is whenever you open a door. Ideally, the bird should be in its cage or behind another door before you even open a door. People all the time will have the bird out sitting on a stand, they'll open a door, somebody comes in, they're carrying a box, the bird gets scared, the bird flies right out the door. Never open the door with your bird right there. People have walked out the door with the bird on the shoulder. And of course they think, okay, well, I'm taking the garbage out or I got to go to the car door and, and the bird's on the shoulder and the bird takes off. Keep your birds in the cages with company around because you can't control how many times they're going to open the door. So the safest spot for your bird is in the cage with company. And never take your bird outside unprotected. Never, ever, ever. So when my husband was away in Iraq, uh, my birds were clipped when he left. I didn't have control of anything in the house as far as toilet seats being up, doors being open, um, dishes in the sink. And when my husband was away and it was just me there, I let all the birds' wings grow in and I had no concerns. I, I could control every single thing. So when my husband came home, now I have birds flying all over and I have to retrain him. So what I did is I would put signs on the door. I find it better if it's down by the handle because people are looking to go get the handle to open it up. So I always had signs up. Um, whether the birds were in or out, and again, it was just me and my husband, whether the birds were in or out, it made him stop, it made him look and confirm that no one's out, it's safe to open the door. Uh, you can also do this with guests because you just, you never know if your bird gets out of the cage or a guest took the, cage, the bird out of the cage and you didn't know it and somebody else walks out the door, put a sign on the door, make them think twice. That's what it's about. Now, when I designed my bird room, I put French doors in between them and my living room. And everybody would think that would be for noise or, or mess or no, that was a safety, safety feature that I wanted because my door, my, my front door is a direct flight path out the front door from their room. So if I have people, say somebody's delivering pizza or something, somebody rings a doorbell, 
one of us runs over to close those doors right away if they're out and stands there by the door while somebody else answers the door and lets the pizza in. And I, it works well too when I have guests over because Sterling's already made his mark on a couple people this year. Um, I have a little sign hanging on the, the little handle and it says, do not disturb. And again, people go down to reach for the handle. They see the sign, they back off. Now, everybody thinks, well, you know, if my bird flies, I could see it really quick. Well, you know, it, it doesn't really happen that way. Um, this is how quickly your bird can fly out your door. Now, Sterling is about eight feet from my front door. That's all it would take for him to get out. And he's 40 years old. He usually does a lot of um, over preening, as you can see on his wings and underneath his neck there. But it's the first time in 40 years that he's actually flying around the house. And now I have to train him to really stay on his, his tree a little bit more because we go through this probably 15 times a night. He wants to be with us. So people say to me time and time that my bird's never, you know, my bird's been coming out free for years. His wings are clipped. He's never flown. He loves me to, too much to fly off. Don't think this. Um, your bird depends on you to know better and provide safety. Now, here we are. Sydney's behind us. This little story is about him. You can see again, this is one of the houses that we put the gazebo up. Here's a little fish pond I mentioned. And the problem with where we put this gazebo was we didn't fence in the yard. Now the neighbors there had a small fence, but we did not. So unfortunately, everybody in the neighborhood behind us thought that it was their right to walk through our yard right past my bedroom windows to go to the uh, bus stop. And regardless of what we did, because I had the police sit out there, they just ignored it. Instead of walking around the next house, around the corner, on the path that they were supposed to, it was shorter to cut through my yard. So we ended up putting in a fence one day because I, I got really tired of this. So we put in a fence and I decided that the fence was in. I said, all right, Sydney's wings were clipped. He was a little heavier clip than most birds because Sydney is very stealth and very light and very strong. So I figured, all right, I took him outside the back door to show him the new fence. Like he knew what a fence was, but I was just happy and that's what we were doing. I took him outside. I had him on my hand. I had my feet. Uh, I, had, I had my thumb on his feet just for a little bit of security. And I closed the door and probably within five seconds, Sydney screamed and he took off. And my property was higher than the houses and the property behind us. So I kind of looked at their treetops because of the way the property sloped down. So Sydney is now flying. I am now screaming and chasing him. And the only thing that stopped him from getting into those trees was that fence. He went and hit that fence head on. Now, of course, now I think he's dead. I pick him up, I'm still screaming. All the neighbors are coming out to see what's going on. I grab him, I hold him, you know, one hand around his neck, the other hand around his back, and I'm holding him right into my chest. Now I'm standing next to the same door, trying to figure out how I'm gonna let go with one hand to open it up. And as I'm standing there trying to figure it out, a feather drops on me. So I look up and not even four feet above us, there was a hawk eating a pigeon. So Sydney saw that, I did not. He took off, I almost lost him. 100% my fault. And it was a hard lesson to learn. So the flight or, fight or flight response stimulates your body and prepares it to deal with danger. It's primarily mediated by, by adrenaline and norepinephrine released by the adrenal gland. The response increases some of the body's processes, including heart rate, breathing rate, muscle tension, blood pressure, insulin secretion, blood flow to the brain, lungs, heart, and muscles. So 
in Sydney's case, we walked outside, he saw that hawk, I did not. And what was his response? He took flight. Fight, flight, yeah, fight or flight has nothing to do with how tame your bird is or how attached your bird may be. So why did Sydney probably see this more or better or quicker than I did is because it's critical for them to be able to survive. And they see much differently than we do. They have, um, compared to humans, parrots can distinguish more colors and a wider range of colors due to their ability to distinguish UVB light or UV light. Um, so Sydney saw this, it probably illuminated. I was too busy looking at this new fence. And again, I almost lost him. So I would really love to see a webinar on the different senses for birds. And, and so for people to learn what the birds see versus what humans see, um, they have different receptors than we do. They see different lights than we do or different colors than we do. So while we're looking at the bird on the left, what our parrots see are go actually going to be on the right. So the rest of the seminar, what we're gonna talk about is going to be what happens if you lose your birds because it's very important to do the right things in order to get your birds back. And I talked a little bit with Jamie Lee from 911 Parrot Alert. And if you are not on there, I want you to be on there. This is where I share all my lost and founds from. And these people scour newspapers and you know everywhere you can imagine to find a lost bird to bring to their site to spread the word so the rest of us can look, okay? So I see, and I share a lot of African grays almost on a daily basis with my pages. And people think, again, the birds are clipped. It's not, you know, it's not gonna fly away. Well, a bird with clipped thing, wings does not have the ability or agility to escape the predators. It's not gonna know where to find food or where to keep safe. It's our job as stewards to keep them safe, happy, and healthy. All the birds being featured are currently still lost, and you can see they're all going to be within the last two weeks. Um, a clipped bird, uh, a bird with clipped wings can and will fly, especially if that adrenaline kicks in, they're going to go. And people don't realize how quickly the wings can grow in. And they grow in at different rates. You might have one that'll molt out and one that grows back in. And that's just enough lift to be able to get them to where they're going, especially if they have the wind or you know, the treetops, like I was talking with Sydney. Now I am not all I, I need to say, all my guys are fully flighted. Okay, I'm, I'm not a proponent of clipped wings. Birds do better if their wings um, are in and they're able to fly. I equate it to a healthy bird, a healthy person being able to get around, walk around, run, fly, do whatever versus somebody that may be in a wheelchair that can't use their legs. It's not going to be as healthy. Their body deteriorates from it. It's going to be the same thing if, if they are clipped. With that said, Nobody can tell you what is correct for your own household. So whether you decide to clip or whether you decide not to, don't let someone on social media bully you into another way of thinking. You have to take into consideration the people in your house, the predators, your dogs or cats that may be in the house. You know, if you can't guarantee that your husband's not gonna open the door when you turn your back, those are all factors, and only you know those factors. So here's another one for the chat. I'd like to know what you see in common with all these birds, which are currently lost. I'm watching, okay. 
Bye, Sharon. <laughs> okay. I'm That's glad to good. see everybody saying the same thing. Exactly. All these birds are outside unprotected. And one more thing, if you look a little closely, fully feathered. So of course, these birds, you know, you have somebody down here in a car. Um, the bird should be for its safety in a carrier because if that person is in, a, in an accident, no fault of their own, broken windshield, that bird's out. You know, it could get under the gas pedal, a lot of different things. So, you know, while it might be a cute picture and maybe people don't realize the dangers, that bird does not belong on the dash, on your shoulder, on your knee, on the steering wheel. It belongs in a carrier. And they're depending on us to keep them safe. So again, all these birds are outside. It looks like this green wing may have a leash. Now that I see that right there, that looks like that looks like the um, the expandable lead on one of the harnesses. And it might there might be a harness piece right here. So that one might have been protected. But again, I know a lot of birds that have taken off with their harnesses on because people weren't holding the ends like they should. Now, I have personally been involved with retrieving several birds. When I was at the store, people would either call me or you know, we'd get wind and I'd have somebody else come in to the store while I went out and I traipsed around or if it was on my day off, I'd get out and go or spent a lot of time and I actually would put out calls to clients you know, if I knew somebody had a gray, I'd call my gray people. If somebody had, you know, Kanye, I'd call my Kanye people or cockatiel people. And we would do little search parties. And, you know, sometimes we had big search parties with not good results. Um, these are two that we were able to find. The first one was not a client. I don't, I don't know who he is. I, I don't even remember the bird's name. But somehow I got noticed that this bird was out and he was out for a couple days. And I was on my way to the dentist and I just left a little early and said, you know what, I, I got to do it. Do it now instead of doing it later. And the bird was lost somewhere in the Jersey swamp. So I had sneakers on and um, we were going through swamp water. And good thing I wasn't thinking about snakes or anything else at that time. I was just thinking about the bird. And uh, something, and I don't know what it was, something was calling me into one direction and I just kept going and I've never been here before. And I stopped and this bird liked the bird or the bird would respond to the owner's dog's name. So I sat there with his favorite toy, which was a bell and I rang the bell and I would call the dog and the bird made a noise and he was only less than 10 feet away from me chest level. Now I'm looking on the ground, I'm looking in the air, he was chest level sitting on a perch. Now I didn't know what to do because I'm thinking, okay, the bird's got to be hungry. I had peanuts. That's all I had. Uh, that's what they gave me. So I held the peanut out because I figured if I can give him the peanut, his beak is going to be occupied so he can't bite me. So then I grabbed him, you know, after his peanut in his mouth, I grabbed him and um, then I was trying to figure out how I was going to get back through um, the swamp with him. Luckily, I didn't have to take off my shirt to wrap him in it. Somebody else did. So I wrapped him in, carried him back, handed him to the owner. The second bird there you're going to see, that's Popeye. It was a bird that I placed. He was an older bird. He got out. And this is a really quick video. I had to speed it up to send it to myself of Popeye who flew landed in the water. We called the tree company out. That tree company guy was like a little monkey. I never saw anybody move so quick. That man hopped right out of that tree, went over the fence, jumped in. Now this, this is where I got bit by a dog trying to help. Um, and I had a fresh tattoo. So you know, <coughs> people jumping in the water that I didn't have to. So that bird probably would have drowned 
if people weren't there to get them. Okay, so again, our, our birds are relying on us to keep them safe. Okay, we're gonna go through this quickly because I know that time's getting, um, getting a little bit low. So again, Parrot 911 resources for lost and, and found parrots, which you're going to do, they have a search and retrieve protocol. You're gonna make sure that you get on, if you lose your bird, you're gonna get on and you're going to advertise him uh, or them with different uh, social medias, okay? Your next door, you know, even your um, Craigslist, stuff like that. Uh, you gotta go to their database and make sure you get your bird listed in there. This is just from the last week or so. You can see all those birds on that page. That's just from the last week. They're worldwide. Again, you're gonna go there and list them. You're gonna make your flyers. Make sure when you're doing your flyers, you wanna put a reward on there, okay? Because a lot of people find a bird and think it's cool, they're gonna, you know, keep them because birds may talk. So what you wanna do is you wanna pique their interest because they might keep the bird for a few days and then realize, well, it's crapping and it's biting and it's loud. And so then they're gonna start thinking money. So, you know, I don't necessarily say put $500, but if you put the word reward really big and you put it everywhere you can, your supermarkets, your vet clinics, your, your food stores, uh, I mean, your pet stores, um, you make everybody and anybody aware. And I would tell people as well, put them at stoplights, okay? Because everybody's got to stop. Put them in the food store. Everybody's got to eat. That's going to let everybody know and let the kids in the neighborhood know because they kind of have big mouths. So be sure when you're making your flyers, um, these are some things you want on there. Um, so the people are able to contact you, but never include the band information on the flyer. I tell people this online all the time that may be new and don't realize it. They put the band number out there and they want to be able to trace down their bird, where it came from, so on and so forth. Don't ever do that. That is your proof that you are the owner. If you don't have that bird microchipped, which I'm sure most of them are not, there's your proof right there. And then you just gave it away for anybody to claim. You wanna advertise, like I mentioned before. I wanna make sure all these little lost birds get their little spotlight. Um, you know, check frequently with your vets, the animal shelters, you know, the RSPCA, the rescues in the area. Everybody needs to know, um, especially with the rescues, their, their hold period is usually three to seven days. A lot of birds get placed before they're returned home. And one of the unfortunate things is anybody who's lost a bird is you're gonna have to deal with scammers because people sometimes suck. So, you're going to get phone calls. You're going to get emails. You're going to be upset. I had to field a lot of them for a dear friend of mine who lost her gray. It was too much on her, and I dealt with these people. Um, just be aware there's resources for uh, scams. Um, don't just think anybody is going to have your bird. They're going to have information for you that nobody would know, and don't give out any information. Go and meet in person. Make sure that you, that bird doesn't, you know, they're telling you one thing or they read the band wrong and you go and you, you know that the last numbers rubbed off and it was a purple band and the bird responds to you. Please join um, 911 Parrot Alerts Facebook page. You're going to see it right there. Get the words out. Get these birds home. Um, please help the owners and the birds. Again, if you have a found bird, you can always go back and review the video, um, the video once it gets on YouTube to see what you need to do once you get your birds back with hydration, what you need to feed them versus water with your blueberries or blackberries. Um, if, make sure when you, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna sum this up. When you get your bird home, go to the vet. Make sure that bird doesn't have any puncture marks on them or, uh, you know, been attacked by a crow. It's maybe something you can't see, but the bird is going to suffer with. Once a cat has gotten a hold of a bird, there's usually a 24-hour window before they are dead if you don't get help. And most of all, if you've lost your companion parrot, don't give up. There's a lot of people out there like me and everybody on my board that are out there looking with you. 
So thank you for joining in. I usually end with this, but I'm gonna end on a different note. June 15th is gonna be the lab's 45th anniversary that Dr. Irene has been working with her African Greys. Thanks to her, we've been able to improve the lives of birds worldwide. We know how smart they are. We know they're sentient beings and just how smart these little creatures are. So, and that's a reason my page was formed is because of all these wonderful grays. Um, you can see I got a chance to go up to one of the universities and work with Arthur, they called him Wart, um, before he had passed on, it's me sitting in the middle talking with him. And it was just amazing to be able to work with the birds, meet them, see everything firsthand versus seeing it all online. So again, I wanna thank you um, for being part of this. You can find out more at the Alex Foundation. And I'm gonna stop uh, sharing the screen so we can get back to Laura in case there's any questions, cause I don't wanna run over. All right. Well, for, uh, yeah, great shout out for uh, Dr. Pepperberg. Um, everyone should, if you can, have a chance to go check out the Alex Foundation. Forty-five years. That's 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 pretty impressive. I can I believe that's the that's the uh, anniversary mark there. That's that's amazing. So yeah, next week, June fifteenth. That's the forty-fifth anniversary for the Alex Foundation. Um, speaking of grace, <laughs> and it, you know, I think um, Lisa that a lot of us can actually relate to to. Um, those those scares that you have with your bird um and, and it's just an excellent reminder that we always have to be diligent um, yes because yeah. believe me they can they can fly a lot faster than i can scream and run yeah and and, and um and there's also the the I, i've experienced this myself a few times is the heartbreak of actually seeing someone else's um bird flying um by you and you just feel so helpless because you're in a car and you, you know i've seen I've seen a uh, blue and golds flying by a pair before, and and it's like it just. It, you it's, see, it's, you're luckier where you are out in your area of the country. The people in Florida, about in Texas, the warmer environment, the birds have a better chance of survival. Up in the north, I mean, if they're out in the winter, you know, it's just not much you could do. Yeah, yeah, just uh, another good reminder. Um, Let's see. Uh, so we do have, let, we'll try to fit in a, a few questions here, a couple questions at least. Um, uh, so I'm going to throw one at you right now. It's from Mar um, Marilee, uh, lives in the desert, Palm Desert, uh, and has a little budgie, Clancy, it's a cute name, uh, really uh, too hot to take his cage outdoors in the summer. Um, is there anything to do besides using the bird light? He likes to sit on the kitchen faucet and get indoor sun that way. Is that sufficient enough? Well, what you can do is um, you can open your windows and put them over by there. If you're getting any kind of sun, I think that would be good. It's just getting through the glass itself is not really going to be the, the benefits that you want. And it gets really hot down here in South Carolina, too. And believe it or not, a lot of the windows they make these houses with don't even open because they're just decorative. So mm -hmm. that's part of the reason I have a back porch to take them out in the back porch where they're still covered and getting some, some fresh air and a little bit of sun in the afternoon. Okay. Um, and then uh, Glenna, wanted, Glenna wanted to know, what about wind? Uh, wind speed would be too much to create much of a, uh, what wind speed would be too much um, in creating too much of a draft? So if you're, do you, are there any concerns about wind and breezes when you have your birds outdoors? If it's cooler temperature, then I would be more concerned about it um, because it's already cold to begin with. And then you have the, the wind blowing them around. But I've been outside with Sydney and he has seemed or his body language is showing me he enjoyed being out there with the wind blowing his little feathers on his face. Um, and a lot of time in his carrier uh, when we go for walks, he'll, he'll seem to enjoy it. The other guys, not so much, but I've, you know, I've seen him, his body language was showing me that he enjoyed it. So with something like that, you might want to talk to your vet to see if they have something more detailed. Mm -hmm. um, I would say anything, you know, if you're in temperatures of say 78 or up, 
you shouldn't have too much problem with a little bit of wind. Okay. Um, oh, and going, you know, just going back with the, the bird backpacks, um, do you ever recommend just wearing them in the front so that you have, I mean, is it something that's comfortable if you wear them in the front so you kind of have better, maybe know what's going on a little bit more, more visibility? On me, it's not going to work. Um, no, on me, it would. <laughs> but, but probably, um, probably have some guys it might work, but again, the bird is going to be, come here, let me show you. The bird is going to be down here with the mesh here. Okay. So there is a little window, a two inch window where you can see, but then there's also the material. So you can't see through that. You'll be able to hear better if he's chewing on it. Um, you know, I, I stop constantly when I'm in my stroller to look at them to make sure they're not panting or chewing or, you know, how, what the body language is to make sure that they're at least enjoying the little stroll. So I, I think the, the strollers are great. Um, maybe you look like a crazy bird person walking through your neighborhood, but you know what? Who really cares? It's the benefit of your bird. Yeah, good point. Um, so, um, Adrian uh, had a, a question, or not a question, but uh, the newer electric uh, ballasts don't have the flicker. I'm, I'm imagining we're talking about uh, lighting. Um, is it is um, it is also important to look at the Kelvin temperature of the bulbs? So, and I believe that. Uh, Dr. Wei's website goes into all that um, because her, her, I just grabbed the first page so you could see and peak interest, mm -hmm. but I believe she goes into all that and there's actually uh, a little uh, machine that she has as well that she can test her clients light bulbs to make sure it's giving off the right stuff. Oh, interesting. Oh, okay. it, yeah, and it, it just to point out also that those light bulbs, just like other bulbs, they do have an expiration date, so it's not like a life a lifetime of, of, of light. So pay right. attention. Usually, usually about six months on the ones that I have used in the past. Okay. And then a question about the, the, the 911 alert, is that an app that someone that people can, do you know if that's an app form that you can download um, on your phone? Um, we'll I don't, I don't know to tell you the truth because I'm not very techie. So I tend to get on a computer and go look versus yeah, yeah. messing with my phone that's going to send me 16 other places. Um, they might have one of those little QR codes, I think it is, that you can scan and do. I don't know. I haven't looked for it. Um, but I'm sure you can bring up the website on there as well on your phone and view it. Um, but you, you'll, you'll be amazed and saddened to see how many are lost every day. Yeah, yeah. Just from my... Um experience looking on on those sites I, I i unfortunately i see a lot of like cockatiels um too because they're light and e great flyers and so even with the wing feather trim they get a lot of uh ability to, to take off um right and some of, some of the vets might be able to answer this better than i have but i think i remember them saying something where the bones were a little bit different in the cockatiels and cockatoos making them lighter to fly farther. And perhaps that's why their clips when they do them might be a little bit um, more extreme. Mm -hmm. But again, they can still clip, uh, fly with clipped wings. He's proof. Yeah, yeah. And, and just, and I, I, I love that you point out the fact that um, if you have some of those carriers where it's a little slot that you slip in to, to use the ties, because um, from my own personal experience, between my bird my conure in the car to go on vacation uh that came off yeah i experienced that myself so those zip, zip ties on those some of those little temporary like our travel cages yeah. um boy that was a it's hard important. lesson learned so. and i would i would explain it time and time again to people at the shop you know you gotta do it here you gotta do it here you want to carry it from the bottom because you pick it up from the top you know they pay for it they say okay and they pick it up at the top and then it falls on the floor so then I'd be giving them another cage and then having to buy replacement parts for me. Yeah. And just like if you actually bump it, putting it into a car that can come off. So that was my experience and boy, that was, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's a definitely a good point out too. Um, I think that's all we have time for, for the questions today. And that was an excellent pr presentation just in time. Uh, so we could all start 
making sure that we have all of our uh, ducks in a row, so to speak, when, when, when the weather starts to warm up and we might want to do some more uh, activities with our birds outside. Now, also a reminder that, that year round sun is necessary or, you know, some, some, some light, um, some therapeutic light for our birds is, is something that's not seasonal. It's something that, that you, you know, offer year round, right? Right, right. You, UV lights or with natural sunlight in some shape or form. Right. Um, okay. And um, I'm going to announce, so I have a couple announcements to make. So first, um, well, we've got, a, 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 so next Friday, um, we are going to be back with uh, talk, uh, Ask the Vet with Dr. Tolley. So uh, it's been a bit for, since we had some some time with Dr. Tolley. And not only are we going to be back next Friday with Ask the Vet, but here we go. We are going to be giving away a new product to 10 winners. So 10 lucky people are going to... Uh, get this new this new product so you want to tune in for that so you have a chance to to win that um and i'm not going to say what it is now but we'll reveal it uh next friday on the webinar and today i do have a winner i have a winner for today's giveaway and that is amanda jewel so congratulations amanda uh i'll play the video but you're gonna be being sent out to you and your bird and let's see um yeah congrats on that uh lisa once again thank you for your time thank you for walking us through that such an important topic. Um, we all want to keep our birds safe. So I'm going to screen share the video. So as we sign off today, here we go. It's going to be the El Paso. Oops. Okay. A little delay here. Come on. All right. Here we go. This is the product of the, there we go. El Paso New Spring. That looks yummy. I must be hungry because this is bacon. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going out. And then um, there we go. Okay. Uh, all right. So Lisa, thank you again. Can't wait to have you back on um, next month, right? We're heading into July. Wow, we're going to be in July before we know it. Um, yes. And then if I can real quick, um, I know some people have tuned in because they were looking for a recap of uh, my weekend um, up at the wellness retreat and we've decided to do it a little bit different. So we're working on it together. There's gonna be three of us talking about, um, you know, how it all started and what it entails and then me as being a visitor. So we're gonna be doing that sometime in August. We're getting a date where we can all get together. So make sure you all tune in for that. Excellent. Yeah, if you want to have a behind the scenes of a, a wellness retreat for for bird people, this is what you want to see, and then possibly join it next time. So, yep. something to save up, uh, save up for as a kind of like a bird themed, um, knowledgeable seeking vacation. There we go. Um, all right. On that note, everyone, I'm going to say goodbye. Um, all the best to you and your flock. Everyone, stay safe until next time. And thanks again, Lisa. You're welcome. Bye. Stay safe. Bye.